Righteous Fire, an iconic skill that we have played and min-maxed more times than what I can count. And today, we have decided to combine the two best versions of it into one. The first one is the life-based elementalist autobomber with Herald of Ash and Explody chest combo. And the second one is the Giga Tank Energy Shield Guardian. We have pushed both versions to their absolute limits on this channel before, but none of them felt perfect on its own. So the plan was to go with one of them and try to complement its weaknesses until it matches the other one. And after long consideration, we have decided to stick with Guardian. Now I know that the strength stacking Ivory Tower Scion have more energy shield, but I like the high energy shield region of the Guardian. Also we're about as tanky having over 300,000 effective life pool in POB. Also, this version is cheaper. Anyway, our first ascendancy node for this build is Time of Need. This node recovers our entire life slash energy shield pool once every 4 seconds. It's good to take as your first ascendancy node as monsters don't have the capability to one shot you at the start of the game. It's also good later on, since even if we stand still against uber bosses, we are guaranteed to survive for longer than 4 seconds with the amount of energy shield we have. Anyway, next we have Radiant Crusade. This node allows us to summon Sentinel of Radiance for a limited time. While alive, 20% of all damage we take will be diverted to our Sentinel instead. This minion has a lot of life, ensuring permanent 20% damage reduction if you don't forget to summon it. The Sentinel also deals fire damage over time in an area around itself similar to us. It's quite useful considering that the Sentinel benefits from our Malevolence Aura, allowing it to deal more damage. From here we take Radiant Faith. This node grants us both armor and energy shield based on our reserved mana. We have lots of reserved mana in this build, allowing us to maximize the bonuses of this node. Finally, we have Unwavering Faith. This node is basically the only reason why this build is viable. It makes it so that our auras grants us 5% increased recovery rate of life, mana, and energy shield each. Increasing recovery rate applies a multiplier at the end and it applies to all sources of recovered energy shield. And the 5% value granted by auras is considered baseline bonus, which means that it will be scaled by increasing aura effect. But with that we are done with our ascendancy. Now let's take a look at our passive tree. Our tree focuses on intelligence, energy shield, life regen, energy shield regen, fire damage, damage over time, mana, and area of effect. Next we got two large cluster jewel setups, both adds as many passives as possible with no notables on them. These focuses on maximizing the bonuses gained from smaller nodes, granting us lots of fire damage, energy shield, intelligence, and life regen. Now for mastery choices, we got auras from our skills have 10% increased effect on us, 12% increased mana reservation efficiency, 8% increased damage per aura or herald affecting us, 2% energy shield regen a second, and 5% increased attributes. But with that we are done with our passive tree. Now let's talk about our items. It should be noted that items in this build are expensive as you could tell from our energy shield levels. However they are not that difficult to craft as I personally made all of them except for one. First we have a void scepter with fractured intelligence on it. You want to reroll this one with reforge fire harvest craft until you hit tier 1 fire damage over time multiplier and one empty suffix. Next you deterministically add aspect of the spider on the scepter with beast crafting and proceed to exalt the prefixes hoping to hit mana which is very common. Then you craft fire damage and call it a day. Next we have a shield with fracture 3% to maximum fire resistance mod. We spam essences of spite on it until we hit plus 2 to all maximum resistances alongside the baseline intelligence that comes from the essence. After that we exalt the prefixes in hopes of getting as much energy shield as possible. Bonus points if you can craft mana at the end. Next we have a rare pair of gloves with fractured tier 1 mana on it. On this one we also want to spam essences of spite until we hit a tier 1 resistance and an empty suffix. Then we lock the suffixes, then we use reforge chaos harvest craft to deterministically add chaos resistance to the item. After that we use eldritch crafting orbs to get tier 1 flat energy shield prefix and then craft the percent ourselves. Finally we use Eldritch Embers and Acres to get both increased damage per 25 intelligence implicit and fire damage over time multiplier. Now for our boots, the crafting process here is quite similar as we are looking for intelligence, resistances, energy shield and movement speed. After that we add 2% increased maximum fire resistance implicit with Eldritch Orbs. Now for our helm, we got the double influenced helm where we used Awakener's Orb to combine both increased intelligence hunter mod and minus 9 fire resistance to nearby enemies warlord mod. We kept at it until we hit a third good suffix, in this case 
a decent resistance. And then we slammed the prefixes for energy shield and went for Aslink for plus 2 AoE gems. This is very important. Next for our amulet, you are looking for a simplex amulet with both increased intelligence and 2% increased damage per 15 intelligence. After that you can craft whatever you want. Just make sure to anoint Arzonist on your amulet as it provides us with that much needed damage and regeneration boost. Now for our rings, first we have Chevron's Revelation Unique Ring. This one must go in your right ring slot. It grants us lots of mana, intelligence and lots of energy shield regen at the cost of removing our mana regen. How to counter this downside you ask? Well, our second ring is a crafted rare one with 6% of damage taken recouped as mana. This mod, alongside Soul Siphon Notable on our passive tree, completely solves our mana issue. Aside from it, this ring also have lots of intelligence, resistances, and increased maximum energy shield crusader mod. Now for our belt, we have Mage Blood. Mage Blood allows us to cheat high movement speed with Quicksilver Flask, and lots of armor with Granite Flask. It also helps at capping our chaos resistance with an amethyst flask. All in all, a very good option but not best in slot if you are looking to maximize your energy shield. Our last item and the one which I didn't craft myself is hate veil mirror tier chest. This item has fractured chaos damage does not bypass energy shield while not on low life. This mod can be found on any grasping mail which can be attained by vendoring 60 corrupted breach rings. You are going to need it alongside as many other defensive mods as possible. That includes but not limited to energy shield, intelligence and maybe increased global defenses if you are playing on standard. I put this guy on standard because I already had most of the items ready including this chest. It's not mandatory as you can play this spell with Chevron's chest piece just like the good old days. But with that we are done with our items, now let's talk about gems that goes inside of them. For our main 6 link we have Var Righteous Fire, Awakened Burning Damage, Awakened Elemental Focus, Efficacy, Awakened Increased Area of Effect, and Level 4 Enhance. Swap this one for Concentrated Effect for Uber Bosses. Next we have a 4 link aura setup. This one contains Malevolence, Discipline, Level 21 Purity of Fire, and Level 4 Enlightened Gem. This setup goes in our helm to benefit from the plus 2 AoE mod which we have crafted there. Next we have a 4 link movement skill setup. It contains Phase Run, Level 1 Arcane Surge, Increased Duration, and Level 20 Automation. Our next setup is another 4 link. This one contains our primary life reservation setup. We have Herald of Ash, Arrogant Support, Level 1 Clarity, and Level 4 Enlighten. Just make sure to get Aureus End Flask to proc Herald of Ash with it, otherwise you might want to use Architect Armor. Next we have a 3 link setup that goes in our weapon. This one contains Summon Skitterbots, Vitality, and Level 1 Precision. Last but not least we got a 3 link damage support setup. In it we have Scorching Ray, Infuse the Channeling, and Flammability. You may only want to use the gems in this setup against bosses, otherwise they will slow you down. But with that we are done with our gems, now let's talk about jewels. For our watcher's eye, we got additional damage over time multiplier while affected by malevolence and came percentage of your maximum mana as extra maximum energy shield while affected by clarity. Next we have 1 forbidden flame and 1 forbidden flesh jewels. Both must mention sanctuary of thought hierophant ascendancy node. This one will cut our mana costs in half and provide us with improved mana reservation efficiency and lots of energy shield from mana. Next we got Melding of the Flesh. This jewel nearly caps our maximum elemental resistances by itself. You just need to get additional uncapped resistances to mitigate its downside. Rolling 40% all resistances on one of your flasks will fully mitigate this downside. Another unique jewel we are using is Unnatural Instinct. This one grants the bonuses of all nearby unallocated passives in range. Place it in this socket to benefit from all nearby mana and area of effect nodes. Any remaining jewel socket you have left must be filled with a normal rare jewel like this one. We are looking for mana, energy shield, fire damage over time multiplier, and resistances if you still need them. Now for bandits quest, we are not gonna help any of them as we really need these two passive points. As for pantheons, we got the soul of the brine king and the soul of Tukuhama. And that was it for our perfect energy shield righteous fire guardian build. If you guys have enjoyed this video, then you know the drill, like, comment and maybe subscribe so you don't miss out on any future build guides like this one. My name is Phoenix and I will see you all in the next video.